Okay, uh, this is my ghetto kiln. Um, fire an electric reduction in this kiln. Um, what we have going on here is a is a standard electric kiln, um, but I've gone ahead and uh, I've cut two one and a quarter inch holes in the bottom of the kiln, and underneath those I have um, standard um, Bunsen burners. These are the same kind of Bunsen burners you used back in science class, and uh, um, those Bunsen burners are hooked to a little 25 pound propane tank and the way this kiln operates is um, it actually fires just like um, a gas reduction kiln um, that you'd have uh, typically um, I go except what I do is I program this kiln to fire um, to reduction temperature so I go just electric to 1650 um, and from there I open up the gas and um, as soon as I open up the gas it ignites um, with the temp with the the uh, temperature of the kiln inside the kiln and uh, I have two holes on the lid of the kiln which are about uh, one and a quarter inches and those are essentially um, that's my my damper is on top of the lid where I control the amount of reduction with just a little piece of uh, little piece of kiln shelf that I put over the top and from the time you start your reduction you monitor you fire the kiln um, as you would with a gas kiln um, um, you adjust the amount of reduction you'd have with the um, uh, the amount that the damper is open or closed um, I keep my uh, secondary air vents on the uh, propane on the little Bunsen burners I keep those wide open and I fire wide open uh, with the gas. I, I uh, just give her all she's got. And then I um, just control my reduction with the little damper. But it works great. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and show uh, one firing cycle. And uh, we'll get to see um, some results at the end of this. Okay, so I got this guy loaded. And uh, it's late at night. It's about 1 in the morning. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, program this to um, take a slow ascent to reduction temperature. We're going to go to 1650. And, uh, and then uh, the kiln's just going to hold for me until I come in in the morning and open up the gas and start my reduction. Okay, it's the next day, and we're ready to reduce the kiln. Um, the kiln's been firing on electric all night on a, a slow ascent. It's at 600, uh, 1665, and I'm going to fire for chinos. So I'm going to start a heavy reduction and uh, uh, continue that schedule for the next 100 degrees before I uh, reopen the, the damper on the kiln, the little damper uh, that's uh, covering your top hole. So. Uh, Notice we have the room ventilated, and uh, all the all the doors and windows in this building are wide open. Um, we want maximum ventilation in the room, so I've got I've got uh, doors on either end of the shop, and we have a nice breeze coming through here. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, uncover the top spy. So we're wide open here, and then I'm going to open up the gas. Okay, burners are on. It's always a good idea to make sure your burner is right under the hole. Okay, both our flames are hitting the mark, and now I'm going to go ahead and close up the uh, ventilation hole for heavy reduction. Let's close that one all the way off, and I'll close that one to about there.
and I'll go ahead and fire geez, reprogram the kiln to cone 10 and we're off Okay, we're at 1750. It's about a half an hour later, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the kiln, let it breathe, and just maintain um, a level of medium reduction uh, all the way to cone 10. So uh, let's go ahead and open this up. And I'll uh, go around the kiln, stuff in the cracks. Uh, this kiln has pretty good back pressure, so we'll fill any of the cracks that we see in the lid and that's it okay we're 1888 um, we've been in reduction now for about an hour and 45 minutes so we're chugging along and uh, I thought one thing worth mentioning is that um, unlike with uh, a gas or a wood kiln um, the progression of an electric kiln is steady you don't go through peaks and valleys through your um, cycle in trying to gain temperature. Um, the curve is pretty steep and then the higher the temperature gets, the slower the kiln climbs, but it's always steady. So if you're looking at your, uh, if you're, if you're looking at your readout or you have a parameter in the kiln, um, anytime the temperature drops, you have a problem. So, um, you hope that it doesn't drop because those those problems are usually hard to solve while you're firing unless you can uh, locate a, maybe a, a hot switch or something like that that went out that's accessible from the top of the box otherwise you gotta just uh, pick up where you left off but those are usually pretty rare happenings um, but they happen uh, a few times a year so Okay, my computer is saying uh, 2197, but uh, I know for a fact that uh, my thermocouple starts reading um, inaccurately once it hits about 2100 degrees. So right now we're uh, probably right around cone 10, and uh, I can go ahead and shut this guy down. Um, we've been firing this kill now for about 12 hours and uh, I programmed it for a slow ascent so that's not bad um, we'll open it up tomorrow and see what we got okay I had the lid open it's the next day and uh, it looks pretty good um, this is not my typical kill mode as far as the wear that's in here there's a lot of strange orders but you can see from the color of the birds here we've got a lot of nice color um, Definitely looks like uh, heavy reduction throughout the kiln. Um, a lot of nice ash deposits on the pots. Um, I use a lot of wood ash with my glazes, so um, sometimes people confuse my work for being wood fired. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this cool down for a little bit and uh, lay out the work, and and uh, we'll break the camera out again. But um, looks like a pretty good firing. I got everything laid out and it's looking pretty good. Um, I'll just go ahead and take the camera and go down the line here. Um, lots of variety in the chinos. Um, my turquoise glazes are looking nice and varied. These are some uh, candle holders, little birdie candle holders. This time of year I like to load up on a lot of small stuff because um, I work it in my studio at home a lot. There's not a lot of room there. Um, here's a glaze that I thought was really cool. I think this is Laura's Turquoise right there. And uh, look at all of the modeling on, on the top here. Um, never quite seen that before. I think maybe that's because of... Uh, 
uh, it was oxidized in the bottom of the kiln, John Britt? I don't know. Um, that's my guess. And as we move over here, we have, uh, this is your run-of-the-mill Jerry Garcia patio torch. Second one this month I've had to make. Jerry's looking pretty good. This is the white-haired Jerry. Uh, last month I had to do a younger black-haired Jerry. And uh, she's looking nice. That's what a uh, Corona beer bottle looks like at 2300 degrees in reduction. A lot of nice color. These are the tagines that I made um, last week. I posted something earlier in the week about the tagines and Moroccan cooking. And those are looking nice. Um, the chinos that I line these with are really nice. A lot of melted ash. Um, I don't know how well it shows up on this camera, but they're, uh, it almost looks like, uh, like gold chino, even though it's not. And then these pitchers over here, um, turned out pretty well. A lot of carbon trapping on this, uh, this little upright teapot. So really the results that you'd get out of uh, one of these electric reduction firings are um, very similar to what you get out of a typical gas firing. Um, it's a good way to fire. Firing, I really look at electric reduction as like it's firing a, like a driving a jalopy hot rod. You know, um, when you have it, when you have it running um, everything is fine, but uh, you often have to tur twist a wrench and uh, turn a screwdriver to keep it um, performing. Uh, I think uh, electric reduction would be a good situation for a lot of people. Um, I can think of students, say, that are accustomed to firing and reduction in college um, and are now out there on their own and may not have the means to build a big gas kiln or if they live in an area that's um, not zoned for having a gas kiln um, this would be a great uh, scenario a uh, great kind of firing for them to continue um, pushing their artwork in their pots um, it does a good job and it's very efficient um, the other uh, scenario I can think of is maybe a potter that fires wood um, and only fires on a biannual or quarterly basis, they're going to have a hard time taking orders um, for things like sinks or um, different kinds of items that have deadlines attached to them. And uh, if they want to pick up those kind of orders, a kiln like this would be really handy. Um, I take orders for sinks all the time that I do custom and am able to turn them around in three weeks because uh, I can fill up that kiln that fast and turn the work around. So, um, yeah, it's a good way to fire. It's real efficient. Um, highly recommend it as one kind of kiln in your quiver.